on to describe exactly what happens at the Bigfoot Recreation Park. People come here to have an encounter with Bigfoot. <laughs> Most of their customers have been wanting this moment for years. I would have to lumber and roar with convincing masculinity. I can do that, I said, no problem, and I proved it in my audition. <laughs> After putting on the costume and staggering around the trailer for a few minutes, bellowing and shaking my arms, I stopped and removed the Bigfoot mask. The fat man was smiling. He said I would always be paid in cash. <laughs> Today I'm going after a woman from Albuquerque. She's small and sharp-shouldered, dressed in khaki shorts and a pink sweatshirt. For a brief time, this woman will be living in another world where all that matters is escaping Bigfoot. People say the park is great for realigning their priorities, for reminding them that survival is an active choice. I'm watching her from behind a dense cluster of trees. The fat man has informed me that she wants to be ambushed. <laughs> this isn't surprising. Most people crave the shock. My breath is warm inside the costume. The rubber has a faintly sweet smell. I like to stroke my arms and listen to the swishing sound of the fake fur. The mask has eye holes but blocks my peripheral vision so I can only see what lies straight ahead. Two other people work at the park, Jeffrey and Mac, but our shifts never overlap. The fat man thinks it's important for us to not see our counterparts in person, to believe we are the only Bigfoot. I wait for the woman to relax, watching for the instant when she begins to think, maybe there won't be a monster after all. I can always tell when this thought arrives. First, their posture softens.